In this section, I want to talk about grid coordinate systems in a popular example of that, which is UTM, which stands for Universal Transverse Mercator. And so there's two different ideas going on here. We're going to talk about a particular type of coordinate system and a particular type of projection and how those two things work together. UTM is really useful, it's very popular, and so I want to make sure that you're aware of it and what it does and, and why you may want to use it. With the Mercator projection, we know that there's distortion that takes place with it. If we look at the TSO's indicatrices here, so these are these circles, that the circles are still circles as we move north and south, but they're increasing in size, and so areas are being distorted. So you may think, well, why are we talking about it, that in this section? Because UTM is based on Mercator, and that may not seem intuitive to begin with, but let's just kind of follow the logic here, or the strategy that was used to design UTM and how this works. So what if, if we know that distortion is minimal right around the standard line? So in this case, in this projection, the standard line is at the equator. There's, that's where the scale factor equals one. There's no distortion. And the areas that are directly around that will have pretty small amounts of distortion as well. So what if we just made a map for that small area, just around the standard line? Well, then we actually have a map that will maintain all of the the properties that we're interested in well enough that we can use them. So distance, direction, shape, and area. The strategy that was used to design the universal transverse Mercator projection was to use a transverse projection, and that's what we see here. What I was just showing you is the typical Mercator projection, which is done with a normal aspect, where the standard line is along the equator. What happens with the transverse is that the standard line is along a meridian. And so that means that, remember, that's where this, I said this before, but the scale factor equals one, there's no distortion, and right near that standard line, the distortion is pretty minimal and very acceptable. So what they did was they said, well, what if we turn that cylinder sideways, have it uh, along a meridian, and then we just map areas that are near that meridian, and that will give us uh, really uh, good, acceptable levels of uh, small distortion. And you say, okay, fine, but, that's only for that one line. So you could make a map of, say, this area right here, but what about the rest of it? Well, all they did was they said, okay, we'll make a map projection that's customized for just this zone here, and then we'll rotate that cylinder a few degrees, and then we'll make another map projection for that next slice of the Earth, and then we'll rotate the projection again and do the next slice of the Earth. And so they, they created these customized zones for every part of the Earth, as we'll see. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. The main thing I want you to, to see here is that the standard line is along a meridian because it's a transverse projection. So we've taken that mercator, we've modified it in a way that's useful for our purposes. So one UTM zone is six degrees wide. This is what I'm showing here. And so you can see how they've customized this where you only make a map with this zone inside that red area. It's not meant to be used for really large areas. It's only meant to be used for really small areas or what we would call large map scales. So here's our transverse version where the uh, standard line is touching along a meridian. And the strategy they used, as I said, is that they just rotated the cylinder. So here's our cylinder and there's the zone that's customized for that one part of the world. And then they rotated the cylinder and made another one. Rotated the cylinder again and made another one. And they continue to do that until they've created these UTM zones for every part of the world, and they numbered them. And so how this works is that wherever you're working in the world, as long as the area that you're mapping will fit inside a zone, then you can use the UTM projection. And you just need to know which zone you're in. So it could be zone 17 or zone 18, because you're telling the software, remember, these are different projections. There's one customized for each zone. So you tell it which projection you're using, which version of UTM for that particular zone. So that's the strategy for the projection that was developed for UTM. If we look at that projection for that one particular zone, this is what the map of the world ends up looking like. Now, it's not meant to be shown as a whole map of the world. I'm using this to show how extreme it looks and how you're really only meant to use it for this one part of the world. The other thing I want you to recognize is that the graticule for the lines of latitude and longitude are, you know, they're warped, they're distorted, just like they would be on any map because they're meant to be converging at the poles and things like that. So the second part of the UTM system is, the first part was the projection, the second is to come up with a consistent coordinate system, a grid coordinate system. If we zoom in here, 
you can see that this is our 3D coordinate system. It's a geographic coordinate system, which is, you know, fine if you're working with longitude and latitude and you're not projecting something, but it's not consistent or very useful in terms of measuring things like uh, distances or areas um, on a flat projected map. So the designers of the UTM system decided to place a regular coordinate system, Cartesian coordinate system, on top of the projected version of the UTM map. And so this is much easier to work with. Now, instead of working with degrees and minutes and seconds or something like that, we're just working with meters, and we have a very consistent way of measuring uh, distances in uh, any direction we want to. Remember, as long as you're mapping inside that zone. So the grid coordinate system is just like any other kind of regular Cartesian coordinate system. If we want to describe the location of something, we do it in relation to two axes, so an X and Y axis. And so that forms a grid, and we just say uh, how many units over in the X is it? In this case, it would be four units, and how many units uh, up or down from the, uh, on the Y axis is it? And that would be three. We always list the X first and then the Y, and so that would give us a Cartesian coordinate of four and three. So the origin where these meet is uh, zero, zero. And of course, we have uh, the axes are extended in negative directions as well. So that's a regular Cartesian coordinate system. The thing about that is that if we have coordinates um, to this side of the x-axis, you'll notice that we get negative numbers. And down here we actually get two negative numbers, one for the x and one for the y. And we get a positive here and a negative there. So uh, this is the different quadrants. So we have the first quadrant, second, third, and fourth there. So the thing is, is that when they were designing the UTM coordinate system, they said, you know what? It would be really convenient if we could avoid having negative values, if we could only have positive values. And so what they did was, if this was the area that they were mapping, you know, without this new system that they came up with, you know, part of the mapped area is here with positive coordinates, part of it's over here with some uh, negative coordinates and here and here. And so if it happened to go over more than one of these uh, different quadrants, you've got this whole mixture of positive and negative values. So what they wanted to do was avoid that. So all they did was they shifted the entire thing over so that the uh, X and Y axis are such that um, they're at the one side of the zone so that anything that you're mapping inside that UTM zone will be positive. It'll be um, positive in this direction and positive in that direction. So here's our UTM grid coordinate system. Now, before this adjustment, the origin would normally be right in the middle of the grid, correct? So that would be zero, zero, and then we would have the problem of having negative values. So all they did was they shifted everything over so that this becomes the origin, that's zero, zero. And when you're recording coordinates in the UTM system, you record them as so many meters east of the edge of the zone, so that's called an easting, and so many meters north of the equator, that's called the northing. In the southern hemisphere, instead of having negative values, they set a, uh, an x-axis down here near the south pole, that became zero meters, and so you still have eastings and northings, and then all you have to specify is whether you're in the north, northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, but otherwise all of the coordinates are still in meters and they're all positive, which is just more convenient and easier to work with. So if we compare the two, the blue lines here are the geographic coordinate system. This is the graticule from longitude and latitude, and the red lines are the UTM grid coordinate system that have been superimposed on top of it. And you can see how it's much more uniform, predictable, easy to work with. This is an example of a national topographic system map from the Canadian government and they actually use both systems, uh, latitude and longitude, and UTM. So you can see here that in this corner, they have an easting and a northing. And so the coordinates for this corner are actually 621,000 meters east of the edge of the zone and 4,845,000 meters north of the equator in zone 17 north, meaning it's in the northern hemisphere. So that's how you would correctly record and show UTM coordinates. They're in meters, they have these numbers that are um, eastings from the edge of the zone, 
and you have them uh, as northings uh, north of the equator. So the coordinates in UTM for the CN Tower uh, would be 630,084 meters uh, east, 4,833,438 meters north, zone 17 north. So it's just an example of what UTM coordinates look like. If you see numbers that, that look like this or in this range and you're not sure what they are, more than likely they're UTM. It's one of the most popular coordinate systems um, and, and projections that you'll see. So just to finish this section off, I want to make sure that it's clear that we're talking about two different things at the same time here, is that UTM is a great example of a strategy that was used to customize a projection so that if you're working at these kinds of scales, like say within a city, that the, uh, all the, the projection properties, so size, uh, shape, distance and direction are all maintained well enough that they're within acceptable tolerances that you can use them. So the, the things I mentioned before about distortion are true when you're talking about a country or the world, but within uh, the, the range of one UTM zone, it's acceptable to be able to use that. So that's one part is the projection that was used. That's a strategy. The second part is that as with uh, projected coordinate systems in general, it's not just the UTM one, is that a regular grid has been superimposed on top of that projection so that you can measure things in predictable units. So here it's in meters. Some other ones may use miles or feet or there's other systems out there. But this is a good example of a grid coordinate system and an interesting um, strategy for developing a projection. If you're curious, this kind of shows the, the size of UTM zones. So this is Ontario, just to kind of give you some kind of sense of the, the size of them. Inevitably, um, when you're mapping, you may find that the area that you want to map falls into two different UTM zones. And I've explained through this whole section the idea that you want to stay inside one zone. So is this forbidden? Are you not allowed to do this? You can still do it. It's, it's, it's not crazy to do. Remember, the whole idea of a UTM strategy is that you have a standard line running down the middle of the UTM zone. That's where there's scale factors one and there's no distortion, and the distortion is increasing away from that. But if you stay inside that one zone, it's at, uh, the distortion is small enough that it's quite acceptable. So if you want to map something that falls a little bit outside of that zone, let's say it was an area like that, then that's okay because remember, really, your standard line is here. It's still a relatively small distance away, and so the amount of distortion that you're going to get is probably still fairly minimal. I mean, I can't tell you <laughs> what's the right decision in your particular circumstance, but I'm just saying in general, uh, a good guideline is that if it's sort of, I don't know, maybe halfway across another zone, um, then it's probably okay. If you're getting a little bit beyond that, then really you're probably wanting to look at a different type of projection besides UTM. Uh, incidentally, if you're wondering how the software handles this, is that uh, if, you, if most of your area is inside one zone, like say it's zone 17 here, and it just goes a little beyond, beyond into another zone, that the software is smart enough to just sort of extend the grid coordinate system into that next zone and pretend that it's all, let me just do the other lines here too, that it's all part of the same UTM zone. So, uh, it's much simpler than trying to have one map that, that spans two different zones and having two different projections. It's really difficult to do. So what the software does is it just pretends that this extra area over here is inside zone 17.